Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today is a really, really hot day in the southern part of India. I don't know how it is in the north, but it is really, really hot. And um, to make something even more hotter is the news that we are going to share with you. And our guest today is Major Madan Kumar. And we're going to talk about two topics on two neighboring countries of India, Sri Lanka and Nepal. Let's welcome Major Kumar. Major Madan Kumar, Namaskaram and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskaram, sir, and uh, Jain. Jain to you and uh, Jain to Bharat Mata, Bharat Mata ki Jai, Mande Matram. My quick question to you, and I'm going to leave the floor for you, Major Madan. You've been very closely following these events. See, DMK always uses Sri Lankan Tamils to try and, you know, usupify, any like, you know, <laughs> whip up passions in Tamil Nadu. And, and today, uh, the Tamil Nadu BJP president, uh, Annamalai, has stolen a march over DMK. He has taken a multi-day trip through Sri Lanka. He's meeting, he's going to temples, he's doing interactions. And some say that perhaps this was overdue. Um, what do you see in the significance why it is happening now and you know what was the background perhaps you can share with us uh, a little bit more perspective sir uh sir firstly sorry my to mute my phone yes firstly uh, just to revisit history sri lanka yeah. indo sri lanka relations uh, we can classify it into three major eras one is uh, when uh, Srimati indira gandhi was the uh, prime minister uh, we had a very different relation uh, india was pro ltt uh, India was pro Tamil, and uh, the Lankan government, the Sinhalese government, were anti India. That was uh, very uh, obviously displayed uh, when they gave up their landing grounds uh, for Pakistani army in the 1971 war for refueling. Mm -hmm. So, India thought that we should do something uh, to address this because they were totally anti India sentiments, and uh, that relates to the Hindu Buddhist. Uh, uh, history far. Yes, and then yes. came uh, uh, our Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, when he became the Prime Minister uh, with his uh, advisor, Mr. Menon, so they took a different uh, trajectory in terms of Indo Lanka relationship. So, India went uh, in a way uh, pro Lankan government, and India was trying to mediate peace, uh, which, which doesn't exist. It's, it's ethnic rivalry. Uh, peace cannot come. Uh, without uh, certain compromises being made on both the sides. In that sense, it uh, backfired. We had sent in the IPKF. IPKF was withdrawn. Uh, uh, Rajiv Gandhi's government fell. And subsequently, uh, it eventually ended up in uh, the assassination of Rajiv Gandhi. From there till uh, the period of Narasimha Rao, uh, the relations were uh, not so great. Uh, with LDD, LDD definitely India and LDD relation becomes very, very hostile, became very hostile. Uh, but the relationship with the Lankan government, the Sinhalese government was not at its uh, the best. I, we would say we thought it was not at the best. Then came the Vajpayee era where uh, our defense minister, then defense minister, George Fernandez uh, sort of tried uh, to balance it out uh, to support LDT, uh, not directly, because by then it was declared a terrorist organization by most of the countries in the world, including US. So we were trying to balance the act and uh, have a hold uh, with both the parties. Uh, one is the ethnic uh, Tamilians there, and also the ethnic uh, Sinhalese uh, government. So that later on came the 10 years of Manmohan era, where uh, we all know what happened in 2009. Uh, precisely this week, it was in the peak of battle the Elam battle which happened and uh, by end of 19th May 2009 uh, the official record is a lakh plus uh, people uh, either were killed uh, or went missing. There are still a lot of more than uh, 75,000 people uh, who went missing. They are not able to trace them. The war crimes uh, were, did happen and uh, the entire world watched it. But unfortunately, a lot of countries supported the Rajapaksa government then. Then uh, it was quite obvious the, the native Tamilians there uh, took a clear uh, anti-India stand because of uh, India's neutrality, so-called quote-unquote neutrality 
and an indirect participation uh, claimed by them in the Elam 3 war, which eventually led to the complete uh, wipeout of uh, LTT along with uh, civilian killings. So from there, next 10 years, uh, we would see uh, from 2009 till up till 14, India started losing its grip uh, on the Sinhalese government. A lot of projects uh, of India were called off. For example, the rail project at that time, uh, where uh, Indian Railway was one of the major uh, bidder, uh, was terminated. There's a GMR uh, airport infra project which was terminated. So Sri Lanka clearly started moving towards China. So they took a pro-China stand and they started distancing themselves from India. So we came to a situation where neither the uh, numerically uh, minority Tamils and the people, uh, they call Malayam Tamils, is basically uh, people from Tamil Nadu went and uh, settled there during the British era for uh, as laborers in tea estate. So we lost their support and we lost, uh, we lost the relationship with the Lankan government as well. So that was the kind of mess which was created uh, at those point of time. Then came uh, Prime Minister Modi's era since 2014 till date. Uh, we have done a lot of uh, recalibration. For example, 47,000 uh, houses uh, with each house costing around 3.5 lakhs of uh, Indian currency was built and given to uh, people, Tamil people there for rehabilitation. The Jaffna University was uh, revamped. There's a library, international library, which was built by India. So a lot of direct measure schemes, which specifically addresses the Tamil needs there, the restructuring of their life, their social security uh, was going on. However, India continued, uh, India believed or India uh, took a policy of getting into a political settlement uh, to this issue of uh, Sinhalese majority and uh, the Tamil uh, minorities there numerically. So when this happens, India would want to have a political settlement, uh, a negotiated political settlement, uh, which will long last. So India started insisting on the amendment of uh, 13th uh, amendment of their constitution, which was then agreed between uh, Rajiv Gandhi and uh, the Lankan Prime Minister then. So this was the, Yeah, uh, so Jayavardhana, between Jayavardhana and uh, Rajiv Gandhi, this was agreed, but it was never implemented. So this is the one point where uh, India was insisting uh, when uh, Madam Sushma Swaraj was the Foreign Affairs Minister and uh, our current Prime Minister, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister Jay Shankar, uh, during their visits, uh, it was uh, pressed to Sri Lanka. And uh, till such time, so India had one trump card, is that voting against Sri Lanka in the UN uh, uh, Council, uh, which was dealing with the war crimes. So India always abstained till date. So India is kind of taking a neutral thing because that's a valuable card you can never play as a, as, a, as a part of your strategy. So that's the final card you would eventually play, but you should not be playing that uh, straight away. Whereas China supported the Sri Lankan government and uh, the more and more support uh, they had with the repeated uh, war crime uh, you know, resolutions when it came to UN, uh, Sri Lanka took a clear uh, pro-Chinese path and then the sentiments uh, of the million and kids of Lanka, especially the Sinhalese, were fueled, uh, the anti-India sentiments were fueled, all the past history of India, uh, India's support to LTT, all this were rekindled uh, in, to build up their uh, nationalism narrative. And that's how the politics came to. And 2019 till date, we know what happened. Their economy, which was eventually to collapse, the way uh, amount of spendings they were doing and uh, the bigger projects were taking. Uh, COVID gave that final punch for the economy to fall. And today we are in a situation where we have a very, very strong uh, people government here. Uh, Sri Lankan government, uh, in today's opinion poll, it has lost almost 90% of its uh, people's uh, support. And uh, the government is heading, all likely the Prime Minister uh, Mahindra Rajapakshi would be sacked and a new cabinet would be formed uh, with all party. They call it as a all party uh, government. So we have, we have gone into that. At this critical juncture, we will slightly move into uh, the local narrative, which is the Tamil Nadu politics, which was built around this uh, entire uh, uh, Sri Lankan affair. So right from the period of Dr. MGR and then uh, Dr. Karnanidhi and then came uh, Dr. Jayalitha, all the three chief ministers uh, had taken a pro-LTT stand to start with. 
or a kind of a neutral uh, LTT or like uh, I would take a pro Tamil stand but a kind of distance myself from LTT because it's a terrorist organization. So this was going on for quite some time. This was going on for quite some time. The most, uh, this became a big issue uh, after the 2009 civilian killings which happened, the civilian massacre, uh, the war crimes which happened. The, for elections following that, uh, this became a major issue in Tamil Nadu politics, uh, which led to the fall of DNK. Because of the, they were part of the central government, the UPA government then, they had ministers, uh, they would have withdrawn the support, they would have got the government down. Uh, when this entire thing, when the, when the Tamils were looking uh, towards India to stop the war, they didn't do it. Uh, there was a fasting and st stuff which happened in Chennai. It was more symbolical. So nothing happened on ground. Eventually, we saw the massacre themselves. So DNK uh, faced the brunt of uh, not taking a pro uh, LTT or a pro ELM stand uh, at that point of time, which the natural gainer was uh, Jalitha because it's a bipolar politics in Tamil Nadu. This from there, 2011 till 2021, this is not a political issue in Tamil Nadu, except pockets of it, uh, which is gained by a local party called NTK, Nam Tamil Kachi, led by Mr. Seemar. So he is vocal about it. Uh, the political ideology of his party uh, speaks more about uh, Tamil nationalism. And the Tamil nationalism's uh, undisputed leader, as per them, would be the LTT's leader, Velupilai uh, Prabhakaran. So this is the politics which has been happening now, which garnered him around 5 to 7% of votes. I think currently is at 7% of vote. So beyond this, this issue is not a political affair in uh, Tamil Nadu. So more of this Tamil, regional parties in Tamil Nadu, be it ADMK, DMK, uh, they will be uh, doing that symbolical support. Once in a while on 18th of May or 17th of May, you would see, you will see a lot of, uh, you know, condolences messages. Uh, they'll speak about restructuring, they'll speak, but nothing will happen on ground. There is no, uh, at the max, they'll pass a resolution in the Tamil Nadu Assembly. That's it. Uh, beyond that, uh, if you see the Sri Lankan refugees, a lakh plus, almost 1.5 lakh of Sri Lankan refugees who are staying in Tamil Nadu, they're still being treated as a second grade citizen. That's a brutal fact. Unless this is a political issue, the regional parties are not going to act on it. Now comes uh, this, the, the national politics. Congress has lost it once and for all. Even if Congress supports uh, the Elam Tamils there, or even our own uh, descendant Tamils there, they are not going to believe Congress. They are not going to believe anyone. And they are clearly not trusting DMK as such because of their past experience, which is one of the worst in 2009. ADMK is kind of ignoring this politics. They keep a distance away because that's not a electoral issue for them. So here in this situation, 2017, when uh, the current governor of Pondicherry and uh, Telangana, uh, Dr. Tamilese Saundarajan was the president of uh, BJP, Tamil Nadu, the Tamil National Alliance parties, uh, their leaders uh, came and met from Sri Lanka, they came and met uh, Dr. Tamilese. So this current meeting, uh, visit of uh, Mr. Annamalai IPS, who went there to be there, uh, this historic visit, was supposed to happen then for reasons whatsoever, uh, then the local leadership didn't take it forward. So now is a situation uh, which is very, very critical in Sri Lanka in terms of uh, their economical crisis, in terms of their political crisis. So here uh, there are 2 million plus people who need, who look forward India, look towards India for uh, support, uh, humanitarian and political, both. So they are, their ask is very, very simple. Their ask is political representation. Their ask is uh, political representation in the country. They are not asking for a separate country. They are asking for autonomy. So separate country at this juncture is not possible. So more autonomy and more provincial rights is what they are looking at. Whereas the Rajabakse government, which currently said that we are do, going to do away with the provincial system of uh, you know elections and all. So we are going to build it. But now that castle has been broken, uh, this this is not happening, this is not going to happen. But one thing we need to be wary of this single East parties is when it comes to uh, Tamils and Tamil rights, they will all will stand together in one line. So we are, we are not sure this provincial rights and uh, things will be uh, built in. Maybe not at this time. Once the country gets restructured, they breathe in, they get back to their food, uh, it may happen so. So now... Uh, we have a young energetic leader uh, who is just 38 years old, uh, who has taken over the BJP leadership. 
uh, he's been uh, working hard uh, to basically raise the party's uh, cadre right from the grassroots level and uh, he's been putting up his hard work so now we'll look at two angles to it one is the strategical one the strategical one is uh, the current leadership led by the current government led by uh, prime minister modi is very very clear in taking this opportunity to get the rights of tamils which they deserve as part of a democratic process so to do that any minister or a, or a or a senior leader from the bjp from the government or or from the party they would have visited it but this being a very very specific issues the sentiments of tamil he chose a tamil leader to go and represent that's point number 1 so that brings in lot of credibility between both the parties there are three parties one is the native elam tamils who are there and one are the malayali malayam tamils which they call who are the descendants who went into the tea estate so they are uh, separate these are two different entities and one is the bjp leadership in tamil nadu so they have taken a desired they have do, done a right choice right thing by taking mr anamalai as a lead person to go in there and to represent it any other leader from tamil nadu would not have been welcome there because they have seen enough of this politics since 1975 so nobody would be able to have that credibility you know you need to build confidence you need to build that credibility to you know uh, tell the people that we are there for you so that is not there so now a new face who is just not part of this politics so they chose him to represent uh, in a way the bjp stand and bjp stand is another the government stand that's point number 1 second thing is that a uh, timing so he has been told this visit has been kept secret lot of people uh, were working in the background lot of visits were happening in the in the last one and after two years uh, since uh, 2021 i have personally spoken to lot of them uh, from uh, sri lankan the sri lankan expatriates outside so everybody's concern was to uh, seek india support so when we seek india support you need to pull out yourself from the regional politics of tamil nadu the dravidian and the aryan narrative of it don't get trapped into it come into the national stream speak to the national government the government of the day which is very very strong it's a elected government uh, by 130 crore people of india so you need to speak to them so they were aligned and uh, they have invited uh, mr annamalai of the bjp leadership so in this case it is both way the communication was happening uh, for quite some time and uh, the local issues has to be seen rather than been spoken so he is not on a just a uh, you know photo of visit just going there meeting people uh, in colombo or meeting people in jaffna uh, have a couple of handshakes photographs and come back he is there for four days so when he is there for four days he is trying to visit their temples he is trying to understand their culture the cultural similarities which we have share with them uh, as uh, ethnic tamils uh, the uh, ground level issues in terms of their people's uh, security food security water electricity what's the kind of administrative issues they have so he has gone into the depth of it is not only meeting the leaders he is meeting the opposition leaders he is meeting the tamil national alliance he is meeting the labor congress of uh, colombo Uh, he is visiting uh, meeting the singly side of it so he is also meeting lot of ngos he is meeting lot of religious leaders and the people directly now this gives a comprehensive picture he has been seen and uh, the singly government somehow because of the rivalry or or the you know the kind of uh, uh, it's in their blood the kind of rivalry they have with them uh, last 3 days uh, i have seen Uh, they have been kind of muting this uh, uh, mr anamalai's visit to lanka i have been following their newspapers regularly it's been kind of muted uh, but it's not been they have not been so vocal about uh, this particular thing and uh, the government has also sent the central government has also sent uh, clear directions to uh, you know allow him to those places without any bureaucratic process and all so that's how he was able to visit the jaffna jaffna prison and he was able to meet the 13 fishermen indian fishermen who has been arrested and been detained there for almost 40 days now he met them he gave them the humanitarian aids and uh, he had assured them and uh, i would draw like to draw a comparison of what happened uh, when uh, mr jayshankar first during the mr jayshankar's first visit to lanka 
after the Raja Bakshi's government took off. So he went, he spoke to Tamil leaders and he assured the India's uh, support, uh, India's moral support, India's uh, concern in terms of their uh, humanitarian rights, the basic human rights in terms of their social security, uh, integrity and political rights as well. But when the day uh, when Mr. Jayashankar took off from Colombo, uh, there was a, a war memorial or the, it, it's, a, it's a memorial which was created in memory of those people, lakh plus people who were killed in the uh, 20, 2009 war. So that was built inside a, a Jaffna University. It was demolished overnight. That was to send clear signal to the locals there, the Tamils there, that we are the boss. India may come here and meet you and all, but we are the boss. We are going to deal with you, so don't get overexcited. That was the message given to them, because otherwise there's no reason that you know you send a bulldozer and uh, the break, break a statue uh, in the middle of the night. But today, if you see Mr. Anamalai's visit, the thing has been very, very clear. Uh, yesterday, there were uh, I think eight dot fish, uh, Sri Lankan fishermen who were arrested by the Indian Coast Guard. The message is just reverse. We are very, very clear, and we have been very, very vocal in terms of what we are saying. So the message is very, very clear. Uh, as far as the central government is concerned, whatever aid we are giving, the $2 billion uh, aid which is already gone and another $1 billion may or uh, go so, uh, this is not going to come for free. For the Sri Lankan government, this is not going to come for free. And here we mean business. And when we mean business, you need to keep your uh, Chinese affairs to the low. You need to get out of your Chinese uh, influence. That's for the national security. And the ask also would be the Elam rights their uh, political representation, their provincial autonomy. These three things uh, sums up the entire visit. On the political front in the domestic uh, Tamil Nadu politics, DMK has been clearly taken off guard. They have been surprised, taken for surprise. This is this was, uh, quite uh, confidential. They were not aware of it. And then you see the reaction from DMK. Uh, our chief minister has uh, passed a resolution in terms of offering support, uh, direct support to them. Which anyway, uh, the external affairs minister has clearly said that it has. We are welcoming the support in terms of uh, the rice. Uh, I think uh, forty thousand odd tons rice and uh, five hundred uh, five tons odd milk powder and so on. So we welcome to do that, but it is not going to uh, go from state to another country. It is going to go from country to another country. That will be legitimately handed over to the Sri Lankan government, who will in turn will do the distribution to the country. It doesn't uh, go for a one particular community or a ethnicity. Then came uh, the resolution today or the, the, the call today from the, the our CM of Tamil Nadu, Mr. N.K. Stalin, that he had asked for a public campaign in the CM Relief Fund. So whoever would want to contribute to this cause of uh, saving Sri Lankan people, please volunteer. And uh, So this is just a countermeasure because they couldn't do much, of, much about it. So in the coming days, uh, maybe a next week or so, Already, uh, Mr. Uh, Annamalai's visit has been muted in Tamil Nadu media as well, because uh, you know who controls the media here. Uh, but they would launch an offensive, a counter-offensive of telling people that this visit means nothing. It's about uh, uh, BJP is this thing. So it's already started happening. They have close to 30-40 odd YouTube channels with good amount of influences. They'll uh, try to uh, drive this message. But end of the day, the 2024 elections will have the Sri Lankan Tamil issue as one of the main issues coming up, that's going to be clear. How the people perceive depends on which party, party takes it, uh, you know, to, to the maximum level. But BJP Tamil Nadu, uh, under the guidance of the national uh, BJP leadership, is clearly taking up this politics uh, in, 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 in Tamil Nadu. That the, we are the party, we are going to make a difference. Everybody else spoke about this. So this is going to be one of a key political issue in the run-up of 2024 elections. So that's uh, 10 minutes of sum up of this entire issue. Thank you, Major Madan. Uh, you know, watching uh, Mr. Anamala is like watching a new episode of Star Trek every day. He's boldly going where no BJP leader has ever gone before in Tamil Nadu. And it's, it's good to see. He is he's really setting the narrative. He's very serious in what he does and he has all the information on his fingertips and I hope that uh, the goodness that he you know exudes something that uh, the Sri Lankan Tamils and the Sri Lankans in general understand that here is a man who's earnest who has given up a very lucrative job to serve the people 
and uh, he can go far in helping uh, the whole region. Um, Major Madan, the DMK has never, you know, done anything on the ground. Even when they could have done something, they have never done anything. They've just used this to play politics to whip up passions. Now, what can, I mean, you can say that I'm going to give this, this, this. Why did it not occur to them before? Sir, I would uh, like to put a question here, a very, very logical question here. Uh, your uh, concern about uh, the Elam Tamil sufferings there, the minorities, the numerical minorities uh, getting uh, crushed, the war crimes, the rehabilitation process has to start. It's 2009, it's almost been 12 years now. Uh, but what this successive governments in Tamil Nadu has done to the 1.5 lakh refugees who are living in Tamil Nadu? They are not, uh, you know, now there was a Congress government for 10 years, UPA, and everybody were in alliance. It's a, it's a, it's a co-worked uh, government. And somewhere you are a leader of opposition, somewhere you are uh, the chief minister, either, you know, it's always the two parties which have uh, ruled the state. But from 2009 till date, what is the measures which was taken to uh, treat those citizens who came to your country? Uh, they are not doing a menace. Unlike Rohingyas or the illegal immigrants we have, they are not doing a menace here. They have been confined to one area. They are, uh, they are working and uh, they have been earning the bread. But the one fact is, none of them could uh, go into higher educations. We don't have a policy to it. The lawmakers would have done something for that. You would have given them better accommodation. You would have given them better facilities. Or you would have given them a very special status in terms of considering this war and say, say so and so. You could have given them very, uh, very, a very special provision for a limited period which will take care of their uh, basic rights and uh, human aspirations. Nothing was done. So 2011, uh, this was an election issue. As I said, DMK lost it. And uh, 2016, it was not an election issue. People by then had forgotten the entire thing which has happened. It's no more a political issue. 2019, it was nil. No, no politician here spoke about it. 2021, again, this was not an election issue because the election was... 2019 and 2021, otherwise I would say both these elections, or I would say 2019, uh, the DMK and its alliance took this entire narrative uh, of politics against Modi. It was more a negative politics. A lot of uh, stuff came in. The amount of uh, campaigning which was done by uh, political parties, their proxies. So this Tamil rights was not even an issue. It was not even a spilt uh, or it was not even uh, told by any of the leaders here. So this is what they are seeing it clearly. The one thing I would like to mention is uh, the Elam Tamils and also the uh, Malayan Tamils, their, their political acumen is much better than uh, anybody in Tamil Nadu. Even the common public have got much, much better political acumen. So they clearly see through the lens that this is not going to work. So this is what precisely all of us, when we communicated with them, a lot of meetings happened with them. We said that now this requires a national solution. National solution has to be done by the Indian government. Yes, of course, uh, the state government would play a role in it. The sentiments would also play a role in it. But the solution for this is going to be the national government. So when you get into the regional politics of hate, uh, the Hindutva, the anti-Dravidian, uh, Dravidian politics, pro-Dravidian politics, and the really uh, you know, regional autonomy and all this. If the Sri Lankan Tamils get into this, they are going to lose their bigger cause. Now they are convinced, they are seeing the reality, they are seeing, looking at the logic, and that's how they are been welcoming a new leader from Tamil Nadu, who is Mr. Anamalai, and they have been uh, sharing their uh, uh, thoughts, they are sharing their grief, and from here uh, to next two years, this will get builded up. This will go for a logical conclusion. And what we lost during uh, uh, Srimati Indira Gandhi and Dr. Kalanjas Karnanadi's time, which is basically the Kachati, it's just a 54 hectare of land, but we have lost the rights because the Article 6, which was built in during that agreement between two nations, the Article 6 was removed uh, by the Lankan government unanimously. It's, it's no, India was not in even consultation. So we had fishing rights. It's an exclusive economic zone. Both Tamilian fishermen and the Sri Lankan fishermen had the exclusive fishing rights there. 
both can use their island to you know uh, dry their fishing nets and so but now it has been gone now you are like an alien you are trespassing into some other country so a lot of people get arrested now it's a time for us uh, for uh, as a nation we need to retrieve that island from them it's ours that will solve a lot of problem and now this is not going to happen overnight but we are on the right path to it and the correct person to lead it to the masses politically the external affairs minister the defense ministry the ccs cabinet committee of security thus they will be doing their job but you need a face to communicate with the masses and that's mr anamali ips uh, major madan if you look at the geographical location of kachatheeva isn't it closer to the indian mainland than to sri lankan mainland absolutely it is very very close to indian mainland so then why did we give it up in the first place <laughs> it was some uh, agreement which was made by then the prime minister it was uh, not ratified in the parliament it's still there uh, one of the uh, one of the legal case was filed by uh, then prime minister uh, then chief minister uh, dr jalitha that's still lying with the supreme court bench so it says that until or unless the parliament ratifies this it doesn't hold any value but uh, on the international perspective it's an agreement between two countries one prime minister elected prime minister of india has signed it another elected prime minister of sri lanka signed it so that becomes a valid document so now uh, the way it is going to go or i would predict uh, with the closest analysis i can see is that we will take that island on a maybe possibly a 19 in year uh, lease right right which right. eventually become uh, as which it's uh, basically it's as even then when this uh, when this island was given it was told that the fishing rights in this particular place the marine wealth on the exclusive economic zone belong to both the countries now that has been removed uh, by sri lanka unanimously uh, one sidedly second there is one more agreement which was signed between uh, jayawardene and uh, mr rajiv gandhi was the amendment of uh, 13 13th amendment of their constitution which is still not done by the sri, sri lankan sinhalese government so if you don't honor one of the government you know agreement which was signed 30 years before 40 years before 30 years before between two nations i have no business of honoring this this can also be a diplomatic pressure which has already been built on uh, lanka eventually this will uh, come to india we will see this will i hope that we see it very very soon all right sir thank you so much that was a excellent that was an excellent 360 degree view of what has happened during uh, anomaly's trip to sri lanka now let's go to the more uh, salacious part which is uh, mr rahul gandhi who was found partying in nepal and surprise surprise the person alongside him i don't know what he was sipping but she certainly was drinking from a bottle of water from what i could see she happens to be the very interesting um, ambassador of ccp in nepal and india had a lot of stories about her about how she was controlling kp oli and um, now what is what i'm hearing is today rahul gandhi was supposed to have come and chaired a meeting in trivandrum with the kerala congress party and they had posters all over the place and this guy is a no show i mean how can a you know person so high up in the totem pole you know act so brazenly you know indifferent <clears throat> uh sir i think going to a night club that's his personal life uh, i have no business to comment about it but what concerns as uh, we we as a citizen is the the person i identified next to him i think her name is yanki who is a yes. chinese diplomat of uh, nepal that's a matter of concern uh you are an elected mp of uh, india you are bound uh, under the official secret act for reasons whatsoever if you are going to meet a hostile country especially like a country like china uh, if their uh, official any chinese official or any chinese quasi government official on a social front or an official front which i mean to say it's maybe a party it may be a dinner or it may be in their office has to be notified to the indian government now that's what is my concern is what he drinks and what he does is none of my concern but clearly this raises doubts because uh, you would have seen a very famous agreement when zengping was a vice president a uh, famous photograph of uh, dr manmohan singh uh, shrimati sonia gandhi uh, mr rahul gandhi zengping and the chinese premier then 
they were signing an agreement it was between congress party and them nobody in the congress party knew about it even the top leader I mean, I mean, one minor correction one minor correction major it was not manmohan singh i think it was anand sharma yeah yeah sorry dr anand sharma even manmohan and, singh and i have some inside info on this but please i'll let you finish your thought yeah so this is uh, even day, till date it's been a political issue uh, bjp has been raising it now and then other regional parties across india has been raising it what was that agreement is all about nothing was disclosed uh, we have seen them commenting on lot of stuff when it comes to india china the china has taken over uh, 3000 square uh, you know meters of uh, square yeah. kilometers of land so and so uh, we are not doing anything Uh, when it came to vaccines, uh, China is doing at this rate, India is not doing at this rate. This own mathematical skills. But now here you are visiting Kathmandu. Fine, uh, you are on your personal visit, but you have a SPG cover. You are an elected MP. When you are meeting them, it is supposed to be notified, even if it's a unplanned, a bumping in face to face visit. This has to be notified to the government. which is not done why am i saying this i would uh, i would seriously uh, on the political side or just on the political side uh, mr randeep singh surjewala who's been the spokesperson for the past 8 years almost uh, he has been let nobody else got the job different <laughs> i know this is the most toughest job any human being can do yeah and you know a deep water deep sea diving is much easier than what he does so he came out and said today that uh, attending a marriage ceremony is a indian tradition attending a marriage ceremony and gracing the occasion is not something some law which we violated uh, we uh, in this way modi government will soon uh, you know kind of uh, start banning those people who are attending marriage i don't know which marriage uh, hindu marriage happens in a night club i'm not sure uh, even i have a lot of friends in nepal but i have not seen them uh, doing marriages in a night club uh, with that atmosphere it's, it's hard to believe i'm living to living into the vs i think to say beyond this but uh, this is uh, absolutely absolutely uh, not doing anything it's up to his party to uh, rally behind him to call him a prime minister candidate that's fine but on the national security front this is not going to uh, this is not going to help us he owes an explanation what was spoken in that meeting who was that uh, person allegedly to be the diplomat chinese diplomat of nepal uh, that has to be declassified every citizen as a, as of this country has a right to question him unfortunately uh, none of the media has questioned him but what what he has done in that uh, night club it's his own business uh, trivandrum why was he not in trivandrum the congresses in kerala has to worry i don't know whether it's uh, it is it's a very uh, holy day today he then uh, akshay tritya i don't know what night clubs are not maybe not operational in trivandrum maybe but i don't know the reason but this is absolutely uh, ridiculous it is not going to help congress in any format i don't know who will be the spokesperson who will be shouting screaming on the prime time today but unfortunately you can't defend this undefendable and uh, thanks to mr randeep singh surjewala i admire him as a person with the kind of uh, calmness and with the kind of uh, thing he maintains in the media when he defends uh, especially mr rahul gandhi all kudos to him sir there is nothing more to comment on uh, this particular incident yes indeed and uh, <laughs> what what really boggles the mind is i'm told in 2008 the signature that mr rahul gandhi did in, in the presence of xi jinping was i think some sort of a, a chinese umbrella for a bunch of accounts that the congress party's first family was opening in a place called at macau <laughs> that's what is the information i have been given this came in one of the hangouts in peguru so do you please please go back and you can watch this information so he said you know you can be sure these guys are always i me myself first and then if there is any time left then country can come in thank you so much uh, major madan and i don't know if you have some questions we can take the questions now i think i saw a few yes, questions yes, come in yes yeah. so we can First question, Mr. Lee, Venu Gopal Narayanan in a five-piece series on Swarajya says that current crisis in Ukraine is pushed by USA seeking to displace Russia as energy supplier to the EU. What is your opinion? Yeah, that's one of the reason. One of the reason, uh, but it, it doesn't hold the full value because the logistics cost of uh, 
uh, buying fuel from US is much, much higher. Uh, you know, Russia is next door to Eastern Europe. They have pipeline Nord 1, the Nord 2 is already on now. So they cannot replace Russia as an energy supplier for Europe. That is impossible to do. That is unimaginable. But what it may lead to, uh, Ukraine has been a playground. It's a war between uh, NATO, uh, I would say, uh, US and uh, Russia. Ukraine has been a playground. That's for sure that uh, we don't need that much expertise to understand it. But uh, replacing Russia as an energy supplier it doesn't uh, make any uh, sense. That, that, that's not going to completely happen. It may partially happen. What may happen is uh, it may take a different trajectory of Europe being pushed into nuclear energy. That's going to be a long-term solution for them uh, because they switched off the reactors way back in 2017 and they moved into the conventional format of energy. Uh, European Union may now look at uh, that as an option because US supplies is fine, but the logistics cost is going to be huge. That's not going to benefit them in any way because all of them, all the European nations are democracies. If some True. leader takes a, a, a choice like this, he is going to lose the election. He cannot go and face the public in the next election. <laughs> all right. Um, did uh, Rithik Great wants to know, did Christian missionaries support LTTE? See, supported LTTE. LTTE was primarily uh, India's child. Uh, we nurtured it. That's an open secret. It's out and open now. At various phases, see, that's not one thing that, uh, you know, so-and-so supported so-and-so. It's always on political opportunities. You would have heard of some small country called uh, Norway, which is in, the, you know, it's a uh, Baltic nation, which came and mediated between LTTE and uh, this thing. Where is Norway and where is this thing? So these are things which are uh, built up. Every country tries to uh, have its own sphere of influence. But uh, 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 Prabhagaran, the leader of LTT, his name is Velipale Prabhagaran. It was built on uh, the, the entire cadre, the organization was built. You need to have a legacy to build some, some organization like this. So the legacy is basically uh, Cholas, which is basically Shaivites, the Shiva worshippers. So that's the thing. So opportunistically, on a tactical front, they would have got uh, support from left, right. Uh, even at one point of time, US was supporting them. So that's all possible. But it's not that uh, one particular missionary, a Christian missionary, went and supported LTT for their throne. That's not the case. Mr. Lee, again, what is the reason for Norway to start playing peacemaker in the LTT issue? Did they decide to spend some oil money on grooming professional negotiators and came for field practice? See, Norway was a proxy. Norway was a proxy. Norway is supposed to be a neutral nation. If British would have tried it, British was once ruling Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was also a British colony. So that would not make sense. There are other reasons to it. Uh, I would, uh, I would on the comment box, I'll put an interesting uh, book. You can read about it. That's a big story. You will not be able to answer it in a, quite a short time. Norway basically played the proxy's role. That Norway has always been identified as a neutral nation, even in World War One and Two. Yes. They took the initiative, but Norway never did it for free. Try to understand, nothing in this world comes for free. So all the peace negotiations and eventually uh, LTT's fall was uh, one of the main reasons for LTT's fall was over dependence on this Norway's peace process. You have to understand that fact also. Dhiran Vinod wants to know, how can citizens who are not born in DN, DN support Annamalai? Well, you can move here and uh, then in one year you can vote, I guess. <laughs> See, we are not to be, this is a national cause. Let's look at, let's not put a Tamil Nadu lens to it. It's a national cause. It's between India and Sri Lanka and we have a, we have a very strong, very historic uh, relationship with them. It's just, we can't ignore somebody uh, like... Uh, we have the CANRA to take care of the minority, Hindu minorities, Christian minorities who are part of uh, Sikh minorities who are part of Afghanistan, uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan. Similarly, this we cannot see what happens is when you look from Delhi, uh, this place seems to be the end of the country. But this is the start of the country. You should always have a peninsular view. The world was once still filled with water. The land, the youngest mountain is uh, Himalayas. The oldest one is the Western Ghats, right? So when you look from here, this is start of the country. And in the start of a country, you have such a very, very close neighbor. Uh, the entire country is in a crisis. The entire country is in a turmoil. So we all as Indians should rally behind uh, 
this particular thing i would say at this juncture it is none other than mr anam nai um one small request uh, major i'll ask you this question and i'll go get myself a glass of water so don't mind my absence go ahead please ladani trump wants to know do you think joe biden is linked with ccp you can watch the presidential uh, debate between uh, mr donald trump and biden uh, mr trump has given lot of uh, you know uh, facts and uh, he has done lot of acquisitions of biden's investments in chinese companies and also in china but beyond that there is nothing to this all see a conspiracy is a con- remains a conspiracy unless or until it's proved so we have certain amount of uh, proof in terms of biden's investments in china but uh, that's the link so far we uh, get to understand <laughs> See, he has been trying to do that. He has been trying to do that. It's not that we have not been doing it. We have been speaking to Ukraine. We have also been speaking to Russia. Uh, we have been speaking to Germany, uh, Britain, uh, France. So all these countries to get a amicable settlement because this war is going to uh, hit almost all of us, including us. Look at the crude prices, the amount of uh, money we pay for our uh, everyday fuel and uh, you know the edible oils. We are speaking to them, uh, but we are not taking a responsibility of being an official negotiator. But the negotiations are already on. Um, I guess that's all for now. <laughs> I left at the right point. Um, thank you so much, um, Major Madan. You have really given a clinical, focused view on how things work out. And and war is not a solution. And war is often another problem. So uh, once again, from all our viewers, viewers, please put your comments in, and I'd like uh, Major Madan to come back to us and share his thoughts on other evolving topics. And please do like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and do not forget to click on the bell button. Namaskar. Uh, namaskar, sir. Uh, my only uh, request to the viewers is, uh, whenever you look at Sri Lanka, India, Sri Lanka, always have a peninsular angle to it. Uh, don't uh, look at that you know sri lanka and india tamil nadu is the end of uh, india you we always fascinate about our land borders right from ran of kast until to siachen glacier western all the northwest and from arunachal to uh, tibet you know lalvelada but we have a much bigger border land water border uh, in terms of oceans that also needs to be secured that 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 requires more security on all of our ancient kings who have gone and established their empire the indian empire uh, hindu empire across the world always took the sea route remember that so raja raja cholan once went from here all the way till cambodia you can see the hindu temples in cambodia till date that's because we were able to dominate the seas so uh, this is how uh, it is always try to look at that perspective don't look at it as a ocean it's a it's our border uh, thank you everyone uh, jai hind जय yeah.